All right, I'm standing here with Howard McGillan. So things. early in the morning. Yes. I know, crazy early. You're not supposed to know that. It's, oh. it's timeless when these videos air. Exactly. exactly. Uh, first of all, that was Phantom of the Opera theme. <laughs> Howard McGillan, you heard that theme how many times? Go. 2,550, something like that. Crazy insane. He has no fear of commitment. <laughs> I will say this one annoying thing about Howard McGillan. We've done two shows together. The first show we did together was Kiss of the Spider Woman. He took over, so naturally all the keys went higher. You know, when he was singing, it's fine, I learned this it. This is true. He's playing in the pit. However, there was a song that began like this. It was like a big piano solo, terrifying. Well, guess what? He decided to transpose it up a half a step. Yet, it was a rap song. Why the hell <laughs> did you have to speak it? We had to do for him to speak. Why did you need the piano part higher for your speaking? Go. Now, I, I have absolutely no memory of this whatsoever. Was it really a transposed? I yes. didn't know that. Yes. I think okay. that was. Not since, not since a politician. I have no memory. <laughs> I uh -huh. have no memory of that. <laughs> yeah, I don't recall but that. But I, I can't remember what I had for breakfast, so that's, you know. Okay, he's getting older. My point <laughs> is this, he's annoying, <laughs> but I am obsessed with him. Listen to non-stop on the Evan Drude cast album. But before we get to the whole Drudeness, Let's first talk about the time that Howard was on Celebrity Apprentice. Go. <laughs> I was not on Celebrity Apprentice, well, but however, <laughs> almost, almost. Exactly. Well, you know, obviously, doing, doing Broadway shows, you have tons of people come backstage. Everybody wants to have a picture with the Phantom. It doesn't matter who the Phantom actually is, exactly. who's playing the Phantom. <laughs> they just want a picture of the guy with the mask. So Donald Trump comes backstage. Okay, I first mean, of all, take that in. And by the way, just go. Donald Trump. We had so many people come back, including Hugh Hefner with five Playboy bunnies on his arm. I swear to God, we had so much peroxide in that room. It was almost toxic. Came backstage, had to have a picture, was not wearing a bathrobe. However, uh, we, had that, we have that picture for a time, for you all time. You were not wearing a bathrobe? I was wearing my, okay, okay. I had to wear my. Right. Anyway, uh, so Donald Trump. Donald Trump comes to the show, comes backstage and says, you are the best Phantom I have ever seen. You're coming down to Mar-a-Lago, which is the fantastic estate that he owns down in Palm Beach, where uh, I guess it was built by um, the Meriwether Post family. It was this enormous, beautiful mansion back in the 20s. Lots of money. And Trump bought the place about 20 years ago, decided at some point he was going to turn it into a club for the well-heeled of Palm Beach. And we're talking, of course, a lot of money, and I think people pay hundreds of thousands of dollars just to join the club. So Trump invites people over for the weekend to have dinner, see a show, whatever. So he said to me, you're coming down on my private jet, and you're going to sing for, for a, a couple of my friends, 300 people, 200 people in the ballroom. I'm waiting out in the wings to make my entrance. Wait, wait, how did you get down there? Private jet, his private jet. Trump, Madden. Trump, it says on the jet, on the 727, whatever it is. Fantastic. Everything inside, custom built, couches, easy chairs. You know, it's not at all like flying, flying a coach. commercial coach. <laughs> no, you're not flying coach. So anyway, um, I'm waiting in the wings outside the ballroom to make my entrance, and Trump gets up to introduce me. First thing he says to the 200 gathered guests is, I have a couple announcements. First of all, next week, Andrea Bocelli is going to be here. That's called upstaging in I, business. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, thanks a lot, Donald. Thank you. Thank you for getting them ready for me. So <laughs> he says, and of course the audience goes, oh, yay, yay. So then he says, all right, so now let me tell you about this guy. This guy who's singing tonight, he's the number one rated phantom. He said they rate these things, like golf courses. These, who, rates the, who rates these things? These things, like golf courses. Okay, so. Who's uh, doing the voting? Who says that the surveys? Like, okay, keep going. Right, so he says, this guy's rated number one, even over Michael Crawford. What are you talking about? They, rating, anyway. So he says, um, so uh, he's gonna sing a lot of Phantom songs, first of all, there's only one Phantom song exactly. that I There's can sing. Ah, Phantom solo. There is a Phantom song called The Music of the Night. That's it. I'm not going to be singing Think of Me or <laughs> Think of Me. Yeah. Think. Okay, so he says, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce Harold McCallum. Harold McCallum. He got the H correct. He got the H and the M. He got the MC. <laughs> Literally <laughs> devastating. So Andrea Bocelli 
lying about the ranking, wrong name, places. Okay. <laughs> places. Now, and halfway through the show, he falls asleep in the third row. And he's right there, and I see him going like this. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> oh my god. Maybe you shouldn't have said, wishing you a summer. Oh, you're good. I mean, the point is, I was obsessed with this one with Harold in college. And what I love is that Howard actually adds dynamics to songs, which most people don't actually do. They mostly just, especially when I'm music directing, I'm like, sing out. But he actually, yeah. loud and soft. So I'm going to show the amazing moment that I listened to all the time when I was in college on my cassette of The Mystery of Evan Drood, where Howard gives us some sassy forte and some piano. You mean you're going to play it back from the album? No, we're going to hear it live. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> it's timeless, right? It's really not 11 in the morning. Okay, ready? I didn't say the that. Warm yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, okay. You ready? So mm -hmm. this is the second verse. So remember, right. I'm obsessed that rarely do people actually do forte piano. Hard's got it going right. on. <clears throat> A sculptor lacking arms, a sorcerer lacking charms, a fiend who frightens no one, for there's no one that he harms, whose clutches clutch at only desperate respite from this dim tableau. Knowing this is so, I hide myself in thought where one cannot be caught, and feed on dreams that contradict each edict I've been taught. And if someday I lose my way and mind, you'll find me glad a man could go quite mad. Go quite mad, could go quite mad. <laughs> I thought it was good. You thought it was good. <laughs> I thought it was great. 